Welcome to Salima Speaks. Well, you know what, guys? I was walking a Reading Terminal one day, and I heard this sound. I mean, I thought it was like a CD, somebody playing. And you know who it was? It was Ajay and Ricky, and they're going to play for you right now. Be right back. Hello, welcome back. Wasn't that fantastic? Well, let me introduce my co-host. You've seen this guy before. This is Noel Reyna. Hello, Hi. Noel. Hi, Salim. It is a pleasure to be here again. Good, good to have you here. This guy is amazing. He plays in this amazing series called The Book of Nimrod, and he plays the lead character. Tell me a little bit about your character. Yes, um, uh, like once again, the show is called The Book of Nimrod. It is a series, dramatic series located here in Philadelphia. Really good. <laughs> uh, created by Carl Morales and Landmark Productions. Uh, the story is a quick, just to sum up, uh, a woman who gives up her daughter for drugs, and the drug dealer, aka Nimrod, mm -hmm. raises, raises a little girl to be a deadly assassin in the city. Yeah. So that's just a quick idea of what the show is about, but uh, I thought I'd come in and co-host today. Yeah, and you know what, the show is, I mean, this guy is amazing. He looks like all sweet and innocent <laughs> now. When you see him in the show, oh my God, he does yeah. this transformation and he looks so evil I and crazy. But anyway, these amazing kids, and your name is? Ajay. Ajay. And Ricky. And Ricky. Hi, guys. Hi. That was fantastic. <laughs> now, did, did that piece have a name? Yeah, it's called Freestyle. It's called Freestyle. So you, you were freestyling? Yeah, we made it. You I made thought. that up as you have gone along? Yeah. Really? That was fantastic. And how old are you? I'm 16. 17. 17. And where, what school do you go to? We go to Creative and Performing Arts High School. Both of you go there? Yes. Yeah. Now, how long have, well, I'll talk to you first, the gentleman first. Uh, how long have you been playing the violin? It was fantastic. In five years. Five years. Now, have you always been interested in that? My daughter was interested in it. She wanted to be a tap dance violinist, actually. But, <laughs> <laughs> Salima. Um, so, how, were you always interested in the violin? Well, I really wanted to play guitar. Really? I ended up playing this instead. Now, I like it as better. an upgrade, or you found that as the only option available, or you, you found it to be more of a respectable uh, instrument to play. That was the only option. It was the only option you had. Yeah, you had to be you said no guitar, no, <laughs> no. That's <laughs> way too. So why was that the only option? Your parents didn't want you to play, or the school, or, or what? My teacher just told me to. Oh. to. But oh, are it's... but are you finding a love? Are you having a love affair with it now? Do you really love playing it now? Yeah. Okay. There you go. There yeah. you go. That's what you have to do sometimes. <laughs> okay, and how about you? How did you get interested in, in the, the bass? That's such a big instrument. Well, we went to the same middle school, and I didn't want to play a cello at first, but it was suggested, and I didn't like it, but my mom liked it, so I kept playing it, and I just fell in love with it. Oh, really? Yeah. There you so, go. and how long have you been playing it? Five years also. Five years. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you didn't want to play anything else? I mean, is there... I mean, I played the clarinet since I was, like, in sixth grade, but that, like, mm -hmm. it got kind of annoying, so I wanted to switch. Yeah, it's a clarinet. I mean, <laughs> uh, I can totally understand. <laughs> yeah, so, so now, what are your aspirations? Um, well, I want to major in performance, and I have a couple of different college choices. I'm in ninth grade now, but 
I want to be like in the field of an orchestra or in Julia or Curtis or something. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. High aspiration. Yeah, That's very go. good. How about so you, good. Mr. Ricky? I want to go to Berkeley. Okay. College. Good, good. And what are your aspirations? I hope to be in the Philadelphia Orchestra. Okay. So you're going to college as well? Yeah. Okay. Now, are your parents like really supportive of, of this? Yeah. This dream yeah. of yours? That's fantastic. Yeah, that's a key thing, especially when it comes to any any artist out there. Any artist, if you have a great, you know, family support, there's pretty much no way you can fail. Exactly. I mean, there's no way you can do it. Yeah. But you know, congrats! You have a great support. Yeah, you guys. I mean, you. I mean, the the sound is just amazing. I mean, I was really surprised that when I saw you guys, I'm thinking like these were seasoned, like older people, and I'm looking, I'm seeing you. I, that's why I just st stood there looking at looking at you because I was like, are these kids really playing this? You know. So were you ever interested in any sports? Well, yeah, I played football younger when did I was you? younger. How long did you play football? Like two years. So that's not something that you aspire to do now. No. I'm actually glad about that, you know, because <laughs> there is more to young black kids than sports. <laughs> so you play the violin and you play it quite well, very, very good. Mm, what thanks. about you? Have you ever, ever been interested mm, in sports? I cheerleaded for like a couple years, but it started to interfere with my cello lessons and my mom wasn't feeling Oh, it, wow. So. so cello over cheerleading. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good because there's so much more to that. Now, do you have sisters and brothers? Yeah, I have a younger brother and a younger baby sister. And my brother is nine. He also plays the violin. Really? Nine? And my baby sister, she is two. And she just started the violin at Temple Prep. So. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Getting them started early. Yeah. Two years old? Mm hmm I mean, like, they can barely walk or even hold an instrument. <laughs> I can't picture that. I know. No. Two years just old? Two years old. Just wow. That's, okay. that's great. Well, obviously runs in family. How about you, Ricky? You have brothers and sisters? Yeah, but they don't play instruments, though. How many brothers and sisters do you have? I got three brothers and one sister. Okay, none of them play any, any kind of instruments? They play sports. Oh, oh see? Oh, wow. <laughs> He's the one that oh, plays the okay. instruments, and they, they play sports. Okay. Thank Are your parents you. fine with that, them playing sports? So now, do your siblings play any um, kind of instruments? No, they play sports. Okay, see? Oh, okay. <laughs> the siblings so, okay. play, play yeah. okay. So the family's like, we gotta have one artist in Right? This <laughs> you get Joe Bug in there and get that violin. <laughs> Pretty much that's why. Okay. Exactly. So now, um, when you go in school, are you guys pressured? Do you have any peer pressure in school? No. Well, I guess, well, everybody's probably talented in your school for performing arts. Mm -hmm. Right. Everybody has a goal there, I'm sure. And are, would you say it's more of a competition? Do you guys like have chairs, you know, first chair, second chair? Yeah. Yeah. You guys have that? So it's pretty much oh. to try to be the best in yeah. class. Mm -hmm. So I was first chair in my class at this school. That's how the system is there? Yeah. There you go. And so you got to practice every day, I'm sure. So, yeah. so where do you guys fit as far as that's concerned? You, are you yeah. at the top? Are you in chair now? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, what are, you, what are you pretty much chair? Well, I'm a senior, so I'm like in the upper row of the first violinist. Nice. Oh wow. Nice. Very. And how about you? Yeah. Oh, they go by they go by grade level. Yeah. Okay. So you would be in what what level would you be? Like, like I'm behind like the seniors and the juniors, obviously. But like for the freshman class, I'm like above them. There you oh, go. Oh really? So you guys pretty much good. lead your classes and stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. There you go. Oh good. Yeah, we can tell. I mean, there's there's no way I would think that if I were just hear the music. I would think that these were 16, 17 year olds. I know, exactly. Really, well, I mean, already. Very talented. I already think sound like seasoned to. performers. Really, yes. really good. So, um, so, I mean, do your parents come to your performances? Yeah. Uh, so they're very, very supportive? Because yeah, I'm serious, yeah. it's, it's unbelievable to hear you guys, you know, um, you're so talented. So anyway, maybe we'll have you back and come back on with, on, on with your parents. Because I would love to find out, especially, I would love to have your whole family on a two-year-old playing the violin. Wow. Yeah. Great. Thank you guys so much. And thank you. And thank you. We'll be right back. We'll be back. Okay. All right. Coming back. I hope so. Okay. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm here with my next guest, Ronald Boom Boom Cook. And he's a spoken word artist, and he is fantastic. Take it away, Ron.
I like that you can't tell I've cried behind these dried eyes, whom I magnetize and glamorize to bright white lies. Cause see, for me, the pain likes to seek and destroy. With the speech, it deploys till it reaches my joy, and it screech, 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 screech till the noise is somewhat melodic to me. I mean, I don't know, it's like it touched my soul, it's neurotic to me. But ain't nothing to be ashamed about. Cause them situations you prayed to never be up in, I didn't came about. And I'm here now, though it seemed long as ever. It's made my skin thick, rough, strong as leather. So now I'm like an unstoppable train, gunning for the top with infallible aim. Cause I was told until the pain of saying supersedes the pain of change, ones to remain. With window pain and revolving doors, to keep skin tone stained with dissolving sores. You can't see my pain. You don't know my life. All you see is change, but you don't know at what price. I sacrifice, I lost, I gained. I'm about that life. That cost I paid. See, they say the vision is televised, is what they telling you. But their vision is telling lies, is what I'm telling you. They don't lie to your ears, they lie to your hearts. That's what the devil do. Got you stuck between that V and the X like a W, Viagra, ecstasy. See, everything is about sex that we actually had that sex unprotected and catch a STD. Scientifically transformed diseases, methodically transforming regions. My country tis of thee. This man in jail, that man go free for the same crime at the same time. But see, it's a different tolerance for different collagens. Man, you let me know what time it is. A hundred thousand dollar debt, that's what college is. Unless you understand that knowledge is where the power is and use what you acquire to become dominant. Like you just can't be no writer, you gotta be prominent. Okay, I admit. For a second I forgot this poem was about me and how I had to turn that upside down and become we. And have it so that we enjoy the fruits of life so much that we succeed. But you don't hear me though. You say you feeling me, but you don't wear me though. Embrace me. Let me envelop you. You hasty. Let me develop you. Take you to level two. How you doing things you thought you'd never do. Sometimes you gotta draw a line in your circle, like the letter Q. One after one, like the number two. Then you'll see clearly what you gotta do. Take those that arrive with you. Take that squad and you don't come back towards the mob with you. That followed you because the vibe that you delivered them made them want to get rid of sin. So your new mission is to get them to listen in. So on the day of judgment they be glistening. When your Lord reveals his shin to them as witnesses and only then would you be winning friend. And any victory before that was just conditioning. And that can either be the end of this or the beginning. You shall overcome overcoming. Thank you. Hello, welcome back. Of course, I'm Salim. I'm here with my great co-host, Noel Reyna. Hello, Hi, Noel. Salim. A pleasure. Hey, you know, everybody always asks me, what, what are you? What nationality are you? I am Mexican and Puerto Rican, right down the middle. Okay. Which Mexican pretty much makes me too lazy to steal. <laughs> He's also <laughs> comedic. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah. Like, ah, I'll, 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 what, I'll what take it tomorrow. Well, yeah. anyway, wasn't that a fantastic poem? How that was actually poem? fantastic. I was really actually good. really uh, hypnotized by the words. Yeah. They were very yeah. powerful. Yeah. I know that we could see that there's commitment and passion in each one of those. And uh, this is lines. Ronald Boom Boom Cook. Right. Ronald <laughs> Boom I know. Boom and, and, and thanks, uh, by the way. Thanks. Oh, You're much sure. welcome, sir. You got that Gil Scott Heron thing going on. Were you a fan, or are you a fan of it? Of his? course. I mean, how could I not be? I was thinking more common, but it's all right. Oh, see, that's your generation, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I'm common oh, generation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gil, do you know who Gil Scott Heron is? Yeah, I'm, I know of him. They got a track together on one of Kanye's yeah. uh, albums, actually. Okay. Yeah, they do. Yeah, but so yes, fantastic work, sir. So, so now tell me, where are you from originally? I'm from 15th and Clearfield. 
What is that, North Philly? That's North Philadelphia. Okay, and how yes. do you like North Philly? I love North Philadelphia. Tell you, Bray, yes. you're the first person I heard say that you love North Philly. Everybody right. else be frauding. Everybody. Okay, so I just moved there. I think it's a, a good area. Me Very too. good. So now, how did you get into writing poetry? Some guys do it just to get the girls, you know? Yeah. <laughs> wrote a well, poem or two. Actually, I've, I've written a, a few poems in my life uh, before November of last year, but November of last year, I really, you know, started taking it seriously. Okay. Uh, I bumped into a mentor of mine, uh, Dr. Maurice Henderson. Am I allowed to plug his name? Oh, he I was just on my show. He just did oh, a yeah? show with Maurice, yeah. Okay, so I <laughs> ran into him, and uh, one day I went to go check him out at his job, and he showed me a chat book that uh, he and a, another associate of his had put together. Okay. And he was like, yeah, man, I helped to put this book together. So I said it jokingly at first. I'm like, well, I'm about to put a book together. And then he called me like a couple of days later, like, yo, man, what's up with that book you was talking about? Like, <laughs> so I'm like, oh, you serious? You really want to help me? He was like, yeah, you know, send me a couple, you know, pieces of poems, I mean, poetry, and I'll put it in a book. So I did that. Uh, and is this the book? That's here? actually my second book. My okay. first book. Second what's book? The first book. My first book was called Bones, Thugs, and Harmony. That okay. did pretty well. Really? Uh, and I told I myself. I like that because I love Bones, Thugs, and Harmony. Ah, right. So okay. for the people who understand or know who they are, some yeah. people are like, what is Bones, Thugs, and Harmony? Really? Like, oh, the younger man. generation. They the don't know. Generation. Oh, the young. Do you yeah. know who Bones is? Yeah. I mean, I, I know. I know. I know. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, that's yes. right. The younger generation. They were out many years ago. Yeah, they were in the 90s. And yeah, things. they were 90s. Oh. I mean, there's even pups. parodies made fun of them. Oh, wow. Yeah. And this is your second book of From yeah. These Hands. Yes. Really nice. My second book. Really um, nice. Is this you on the back cover? That's actually me and Sonia Sanchez. Oh, it is. I've met her before. Okay. We did a we did an event together uh, January first of this year. Okay. How nice, is she? I haven't seen her in ages. Uh, she is beautiful. Uh, she, is. she is just a beautiful character, and just very. Uh, and she's down. She's she's down inviting. Her, yes. You know, like, it took us twenty people. minutes. I walked her to her car. It took us literally. Well, my mentor said it took forty five minutes, but. It probably did. It took 45 <laughs> minutes. I'm just going to go with that one. Okay, 45 yeah. minutes to get from the place where we had the event at, to her car. I mean, every step was somebody else stopping, wow. uh, getting them to sign a, a book or anything she's, like that. She's, she's amazing. Yeah, so she now, now tell me a little bit about you. We always get personal here. That's so cool. are you in a relationship? Uh, I'm in a relationship. I okay. am. Yep, and, just started. And, and tell me a little bit about that. Well, it's new. It's a new okay. relationship, so I can't. How would you meet her? I met her uh, in Philadelphia. She's a, a local model. Okay. Um, I started off uh, like a, her physical trainer, and we just kind of. You were her trainer? Yes, and we just kind of grew closer. See, that, you know, that does happen, trainers, I guess, because you're Cause so You got to get kind of intimate, you know, if the yeah. person is, you know, comfortable with it. Okay. You can't stretch somebody, like, from afar, like, oh, yeah, you got to. Stretch that leg. Yeah. And it's two feet away. <laughs> so, you gotta so kind of be up. That, <laughs> right. yeah. Have you ever had a personal trainer? Uh, well, no. Just pretty much <laughs> coaches. Coaches my entire life. Oh, okay. uh, no one on one. No, personal. no one on one personal trainer. I have done the training though. Having a you know fourteen year background in athletics, mm. you know you know a lot of things. So you end up right. kind of helping somebody out. But you know, starting a relationship. You know, a lot of the people who I've trained or you know. Really? Like so, that. You just kind of, you know, it's very so professional. you know what, though, because I, I had a, an ex, and I had a personal trainer, and he had a fit. Well, I say why now? Because, <laughs> right. you know, you do get kind of intimate and personal, and okay. If, yeah. if the vibes are right. Yeah. You know I mean, if you I guys mean, it's got to feel there. I mean, but. She was so down to earth. I thought she was going to be a little snobby because she was a model, but she was very down to earth. We clicked really okay, well. Okay, and so... um. You've been, you've only been doing poetry for about a year now, you're saying? Not even, since November of since last November year. Since November of last wow. year. Wow. Mm -hmm. and, and I've read some of your poetry. It's, it's really fantastic. Thank you. Very good. So how did you get from personal training? I mean, is that something that you're still doing? Well, it's, it's like, you know, same situation as him. I just have an extensive background in athletics. I ran track and field in oh, high school and college. I got the ring for it, buddy. I got a big East Championship oh, ring. Oh, you got the ring? Yeah, it's okay. an NCAA ring. So, yeah, I got one of I those. I did the things. high jump hurdles and okay. decathlon. So. Oh, oh yeah, so you're a decathlete. Decathlete. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that sounds that. funny, but that's yeah, actually it, it makes sense. This is just us talking now. Yeah. You guys just leave <laughs> us alone. I didn't Anyways, know no. That. I so that's know. that's real. You started out so, just doing that. Yeah, I just I went to two different colleges, a couple different camps. So 
along those ways, I stole information, and you know, I just pay pay it forward. So. Oh wow, yeah, that's, that's, that's great. Yeah. So now, what do you prefer? Is are you going to make this your career right Of course, that's right? that's just extracurricular, you know. Right. I just actually was just trying to help her out. Okay. I wasn't. I don't charge or anything. Oh, like so that. You, you don't do that as your profession? No, no, no. no. Yeah. Okay. What is your day job? You can say. I'm actually a program administrator for a nonprofit uh, anti-drug and alcohol OST. Really? Which means out of school time program. So anytime, uh, like after school or if the schools are closed down, you know our facilities are open. Right now we're operating as a summer camp. So really, what's the name of the facility? It's called ADAC Anti Drug and Alcohol Crusaders, located oh, wow. at Fifty Second yeah. and Arch. Yeah. That's great. great. And tell me a little bit about that. Uh, it's it's it's. It's so interesting. You have neighborhood, you have neighborhood <laughs> kids. You have neighborhood yes. kids that come Local in. Local West Philly uh, kids who come from, from a hard and yeah, fifty second and market. That's that's a rough neighborhood. Okay. So we offer a safe haven or a safe place for those kids. I was just there the other day, and this guy got hit on a bike. I forgot to tell you guys for real. Yeah. The lady was turning around right into the guy on the bike, and he didn't die, but he was laying. His leg was all twisted, all yeah. up and everything. I have it on camera for real. Anyway, that's probably was one of my students. Yeah, no, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> He was an older guy. He was like in his forties. Cool. Yeah. yeah, and the lady was turning the corner and hit him. I'm standing looking, and his leg was like literally up yeah. here by his shoulder. Ah, yeah, yeah. And I ah. and I filmed it. So the cops said, "Well, would you want someone to oh, film you?" You filmed it? Yeah, I did. You gotta and send I said, that to me. Uh, yeah, no. and I tell him, I said, "Well, I I'm filming it because I know him." My pastor, I said, "I'm filming it because I know him, and I might need to use this oh, okay. later." Of yeah. course, but That's anyway. But so, yeah. so you you get neighborhood kids. Mm -hmm. Now, do they? come to your program voluntarily or they sent there? How do you voluntarily. get the Voluntarily. Um, it's like the only program in that neighborhood that offers that service. So really? Yes. Now, how, what age are the, are the children? Uh, right now in our camp, we have children from 4 to 14. And okay. then we have some volunteer youth. Well, they're, they're not volunteer. We have some youth workers from uh, Work Ready and Youth Build and things like that. So, so the, they're like the counselors? Junior counselors, yeah, okay. and they range from uh, fourteen to seventeen. So now this is just for the summertime. The camp. This program runs all year, though. Okay, yeah, oh, so, very wow. good. So for the summertime, we we uh, increase our hours. Okay. You know, uh, whereas during the school year, we're after school program. Oh, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have uh, just children from West Philadelphia? Uh, for them, yes. For the for the most part, all West Philadelphia kids. Okay. Yes. Hopefully, you know, you can branch out. This will be. A I mean, we thing. try to do some recruitment, but it's just rough. You know, a Why? lot of people are just, they're not willing to come out of their neighborhoods for an after-school program that's going to be three hours when it's going to take an hour to get there, traveling oh, okay. to and from. Makes so. sense. Okay. Well, maybe they could open up, like, different parts of the city, you know? Yeah. It's just, it's a small. It's a goal. You know, it's a goal. Yeah. There you go. And so, what's, I'm sorry, what's the, like, uh, since you are going to pretty much pursue this full time, so mm -hmm. what, what's the next step in your career right now? You, you see, know what? You got almost a year of experience now. Mm -hmm. What's the next step in you know, order to get to the next level? I've been thinking about that a lot lately. I definitely want to take this, uh, like, around the country. I don't want to be so local. I've been to a, a few spots within the state and a few spots around the state, but I want to get out of the tri-state area. I want to hit the Midwest, hit the West Coast, down South, things like that. Okay. Um, I was just, you know, having this conversation with myself the other day, like, what's next? <laughs> yeah, I do that yeah. too. You got I, to. I yeah. answer myself. You got to. I mean, yeah, I be yeah. checking myself. I come at yeah. myself. I do all that. I right. do all self-management. Yeah, like, yeah, you do that. Get it together. You got a whole, now, what is, whole what is your inspiration for your poetry? Where do you get it from? Oh, uh, emotions and situations. Okay. I feel like that's the best time to write poetry. Um, do you think you write better when you're sad, when you're going through something or going through changes? Whether it's sad or happy, it's whether you're going through any type of emotional change, it, it creates a, a creative uh, spark. Like when you're changing emotions, it, it kind of- you know, When you're sad, do you write sad poems? And you're happy, you write happy poems? Um, or do you, I don't know you, if I have any happy your, poems. Your poems really. are, are, are really, you know, political right. kind of story. I like really to teach meaningful. and reach. I don't, you know, right. I don't think I'm, I have a couple love poems in there, but okay. I like to reach the people. I like to leave people thinking about how can we improve 
Okay. Our lives. Yeah, because right now lives. I see it as it's a mm -hmm. rant in order to like, hello, let's get focused, people. Yeah. Let's see, we the problem's right there. Why isn't nobody seeing it? I mean, I that's what I was hearing. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's there. Everybody, when you say it, people know. Yeah, that is happening, but it's not. But we're not you know, doing nothing about it. We're not doing nothing about right. it. Not anything. Actually, the last time I performed that piece, because uh, I don't do the same pieces. You do different. Yeah, every time I do a show, I do a, a different piece or pieces. But last time I performed that, I was in uh, a club in Philly, oh, and wow. some guy who was a big fan of another guy, some poet, and he came out to the Chinese store that I was in after I performed, and he was like, man, I was just waiting for you to tell us to riot. I was ready to go, so <laughs> just stuff like that. You know, <laughs> excited riot. Wow. You're you exciting know. riots with your poem. But yeah. you know what, thank you so much thank you for, for being on my me. show, and thank you. Thank you very Mr. much. Reina, thank you so much for having me again. And thank you for tuning in to this edition of Salima Speaks. Remember, love yourself, love others, and don't forget to stretch. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>